You are now listening to the sounds of Of course. I mean, that album changed my life. Yeah. Um, I, that album uh, got to a, got me to this point where I was pretty much in many ways set for life. Yeah. You know, um, like that just, everything changed after that. Is that from the worldwide um, reception, like overseas in different countries uh, that yeah. helped boost that? Yeah. Like it just was really big overseas. It re- especially overseas it like really connected with um, a more open-minded political mm-hmm. kind of milieu. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, you know, really reached a lot of people. Like a lot of people just, the product the production is great uh half over half of it is done by alias r.i.p alias one of my favorite producers of all time and lyricist uh top, top tier as well in his own right um i mean the that album though the production and the way it was put together one of the best how was it different creating that compared to bottle of humans your debut um well totally i mean originally selling live water was just me and alias's album okay um and then like i just kept wanting to make more songs like plutonium and he was just ready to start working on his so was uh, that a, a so-called artist album at first no no it was okay. just it was a soul album that okay. he was producing and i mean again this was like a time where we're really learning a lot of stuff you know we're mm-hmm. just getting computers and the mm-hmm. digital recording is just becoming a thing mm-hmm. and so he's no alias is no longer limited to um what's on the sampler you know and he's like playing keyboards on stuff yeah. and um and he just was always just uh intrinsically musically talented yeah. um even, i remember when he used to just have a like a dr550 shitty drum machine back in the day and he just crush it on that thing yeah. a bunch of this shit was on a demo this yeah. fucking um this dude franz uh, from atlantic was the A&R for Atlantic and he was helping manage Anaconda at the time. Um, and so there was like a demo with like all those songs, but like some of the songs that were like on the priziest horse, mm. um, like that song, uh, the surface, the surface, the surface, the surface, yep. like that was one of the first songs we worked on for selling live water, but it was like too aggressive to, to go on the album or something. Um, and so there were just songs that like made sense for the album that, but we just kept making a bunch of songs. Yeah. Um, so we probably made, I don't know, like 18 songs in that time period. Priciest Horse is by far my favorite on the whole album. <sighs> yeah. Just killer. hands down, hands down, just to say, I mean. Just, killer. I'd rather, I'd rather, I mean, it's good that I can actually fucking tell you that, which is tight as fuck. But yeah, that's my, that's my favorite song on the album. But, and you know, and that song, it doesn't really, it almost doesn't fit the album. It's like, it's real. it's very heavily like sample based. It's got a horn. It's got a horn. I've never rapped on a horn. Yeah. So, it's yeah. so dope, dude. It's, it's, it's well put together. I mean, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Telephone Jim Jesus, Nose Dom, and Jell, who who were also involved with production of that album. I mean, the four, I mean, four of the greatest hip hop producers of all time. Yeah, you know, in my opinion, like that, like that's a like that, that's a production dream team. Like, yeah, working with those people in that time period. Uh, like those guys are were fucking are they're, they're geniuses. You know, all of them for sure. And, would you say it, uh, underrated in certain ways? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, most a lot of great electronic musicians yeah. reference them. You know, or like oh, that's my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they get their, you know, they get, the, you know, everybody gets their get what they get. You know, Ooh. shit. What were your thoughts when uh, you know I'm a big Alias fan? So I mean, when he put down the mic basically stop rapping and focus solely on producing and beats what what were your guys' thoughts on that did you you know were, were you upset and wanting him to get back on the mic because he's so well lyrically or just you know you guys were all you, you behind him pushing that passion i mean yeah it, it was a it was whatever he wants to do yeah you know what i mean um i think he felt like um I mean, his solo instrumental sets were just dope. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, I, 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 that's, I, I feel like that was more natural for him. And I could, that's what yeah. he wanted to focus on. I couldn't imagine him showing you those beats. Yeah. And you being like, 
watch me work my motherfucking magic. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, him just showing you, like, what do you think of this? You'd be like, bro, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you think so? And you're like, watch this. I, I, still, I, still, remember, I still remember the first time uh, I was like, when he was still in Maine and I was in the Bay, I was working at, I was working in the Embarcadero. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I was like talking to him on, on the on cell phone. And he's like, he's like, oh man, I just working on this new song this crazy beat check it out and then he plays me this i've been so many places uh, oh, and, he's like playing it to me the and then the drums come in and i was like dude i was like dude you gotta let me rap on that shit you gotta let me rap on that shit and uh yeah but i just remember the first time you know hearing a beat on the phone you know what i mean that's some fucking yeah. 90s oh shit, man you know? for sure like, how old were you when you when you made bottle of humans that track 20 young minded so right when you got to the bay that shit yeah. takes me back bro to being yeah. 13 you know oh, what I mean? 14 on just, that that sample on Ooh. the transitions on uh from track to track on uh selling live water everything transitions very smoothly the beats mm -hmm. kind of cut from one beat to the next like a movie. and you can hear that beat Score. a sample from one was that done post or was that done while you guys were kind of making the album that was kind of in the mind that was no, no right. Was it no sum? I feel like that was, I feel like it was no sum and why actually. Oh, damn. Like they had this um, way of editing and sequencing albums uh, and just really had a good ear for it. You know, they were like art school kids and like they yeah. really, you know, they were like good at editing. You know, like take this song out, take mm -hmm. this song out. You know, I'm like, I'm insulted. <laughs> like, you know, um, because uh, originally selling live water was sixty minutes, you know, and the, and those guys cut three songs from the album. Oh damn! Or we need those songs. Or two. No, I mean they those song those songs were on songs that went ten. They were on other things. Okay. Yeah. Top of the world, yet I ain't never left my head and I turn to look back. Every seven pages an anthem for a different mood. In a perfect world, I set the perfect mood. In a perverted abode, I claim both. In plain clothes and sing songs of under depression, love, chemical imbalance, shared paranoia. My science is fiction. I think space wraps us down to earth and the kids that get dumb to the only ones that wanna listen. My words of my world, believe it or not, they mean a lot to some. Can't say that I'm ahead of my time. I feel that my time will never come. 